Hello and welcome back, this is Instatorus and I'm going to be playing Gabriel Knight to the Beast Within. Last episode, well... We had an interesting revelation with Fonzel and we shot him. And, um, well... Gabriel Knight is turning into a werewolf and his mortal soul is in danger if he kills a human his soul will be eternally damned and um, as we know von Glover is also a werewolf and his plans for Gabriel who knows we will probably find out so obviously we are trying to do everything we can to help to Gabriel get rid of this curse after all we don't want his soul to be cursed and um, to be honest if you think about it uh, wet dog smells bad so yeah we probably don't want to have that for Gabriel it's okay when it's dry when he's wolf but yeah anyways I digress and so we are trying to find the lost parts of the uh, Wagner's opera three parts in the Neuschwanstein's castle and then we need to find something in here uh, next to the next to the urn of the Ludwig the uh, second heart but we cannot enter there yet so we know what we need to do we need to use this to get to the heart but uh, as we cannot enter as there's a mass going on so we need to go to the Neuschwanstein and start to loot those uh, lost opera parts and if you remember we do have a pigeon with us in our pocket because why not everybody has to have a pigeon in the pocket uh, it's good to have and you can use it as a diversion uh, that is one thing where we cannot enter because we don't have the key we hopefully find that so let's go and see what we can do mm, I don't think there was anything in here I hope this will be the last episode well hope and hope but uh, I mean I hope that I can end this in this episode because I have no idea how long oh what's happening here we have left Uh, oh no 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 don't no don't do that oh, okay I think yeah one was in here The weird thing, I have no idea what I'm going to play next. But that's, again, neither here nor there. Let's concentrate on this. One down, two to go. Can I check it? Okay. So what do you say about that? Wagner's opera. It really exists. It it sure does. Uh so one is in here. I doubt there's anything left in there now. Besides, the guard would kill me if I touched it. Yes. How do I get her to leave we do have this bottle of water but I don't know can I interact with anything no what's on the left side I don't think I need to move the table but I can interact with the table what could I do with the table bird on the table no, bird doesn't work work on the table. This we need later. 
I only can think of the portal of water. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, no, not even that. I don't think. Okay. Oh, what's. Okay. I'm surprised people don't sit in these chairs when the guard's not looking. Hmm. Hmm, what? I don't want to sit in the chair, but perhaps there's a way to convince the guard that someone else did? Uh, hmm. Water? I don't think we use the pigeon in here. Entschuldigen Sie bitte, die Kinder. Ich hole etwas, um es auszuwischen. Okay, so how that helped us. Huh. I'm guessing we are using the bird in here, but how do I... I don't think the guards would be sympathetic to my cause. Hmm. Or did I understand? Wait, wrong way, wrong way. Uh. Wait a minute. Uh... Come on. So, what am I supposed to? Oh, no, no, no. Was it here? Yeah. I was in the wrong room. Sorry about that. So now we have the second part. Second movement. And we still have the pigeon in our pocket. It's in my pocket. Hip hip hurrah. I think I only need one more act. That is true, and we know where it is. It's in. Nope. It's in here. So, how. Huh? This is where we use the pigeon, I'm guessing. So how do I use them? Hmm. Not a bad idea, but if I let the pigeon loose in here, it won't help me much. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so where do I let it loose? Okay, so here. Favor for a favor. We gave the pigeon food and placed the rest. Now he will help us. Some symbiosis. It would be actually hilarious. You throw a bird and it would just fell down like a rock. Wie ist das Ding hier hereingekommen? Okay, so I'm almost certain that the opera is where the guard stood. Yeah, it is. Now we have the third part. So we probably need to go and see if we can finally enter the altar thing.
Okay. And the vision is free. Yeah, just think about it. You throw a pigeon and it would or bird and it just would go down like a rock. Whee. Oh don't picture it. So we have the last part. This is the only copy of Wagner's Lost Opera. It sure is. So I think we can leave now. Um, where's the exit? There. So let's go to the altar thing and uh, hopefully we can move forward in here. Uh. Hello. Uh. I don't need another bottle. Okay. Do I give this? He won't take me into the shrine until the service is over. Um. I don't need another bottle. So. So we need to do something. Here's the Rittersburg. I'm guessing we need to go to the Rittersburg, yes. Gerda's offered to help, but I can't think of anything she can do at the moment. Maybe we need to call someone. Do I have any numbers left? Uh, priest card, grace wallet, I don't have I any. think the time for re- Okay, so... Let's go. I thought we could uh, contact the, that music guy. What was his name? I can't rem remember, but no, we cannot do that. So do I go and maybe something we have in here? Ugh, I hate that noise. Grüß Gott, Frau Nakimura. Grüß Gott, haben Sie etwas für mich? Nicht für Sie, aber für den Schattenjäger. For Gabriel, what is it? I'll take it to him. Ich bringe es zu ihm, okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay, probably should have checked the post office earlier. Von Glover's letter, yeah. It's a letter from Von Glauer. And he sent the Ritter talisman back too. Gabriel, I know you are very ill right now. The change is always painful. I went through it myself when I was only 12, and I did not even know what was happening to me. I'm sorry I'm not there to help you, but I have a pretty clear sense that you would not welcome my presence. You are safe in Rittersburg. For now, that is enough. Let me speak then of the future. You hate me now. I know this. But I have some hope that by the pass of the second moon, when the sickness wanes and the blood has inflamed the greater part of you, you will see things differently. You will need me then, and I think you will want me then. It is for hope of this that I did not have you destroyed the night you were bitten by Vonzell. I could have done. You were passed out for hours at the lodge. It would have been a simple thing to wake the men, show them Vonzell's corpse, and make up a story that would enrage them enough to kill you. I did not. Let that be proof of my true desire for friendship with you. I have desired companionship for more years than you have lived. 
I have even very rarely taken the risk and changed others. But the blood was always too much for the brain, and my chosen one ended up dead. Or mad. This is why I started the Hunt Club. It was my idea that if I could first indoctrinate men's minds to the religion of tooth and claw, that they then might be prepared for the change. As you have seen, it did not work. Gonzal was the best of the lot. If he had turned out well, I would have taken the others. But there's no point in even trying with them now. But you are different. You are a ritter. Your blood is already supernatural. Yes, I know of your family. I have studied much over these long years. When we met, I felt somehow that you would not be destroyed by the gift. You have an enormous streak of the beast in you, and you are innately strong in the occult. You will be powerful and beautiful in the change. I am sure of it. I did not intend for it to happen so soon and in such a way. But perhaps fate has its own reason. But how confused you must be. You may feel I used you to dispose of Vontel. I did. He had to be taken care of and you obligingly showed up. What was I to do? I am too old not to have learned at least this much about the light. You cannot shut it out. Better to let it in and let it simply dim to adjust to the relative brightness inside. Think well on these things as your body adjusts. Think about meeting me in Munich in two months' time. We can leave Germany if you wish and go anywhere you like. I will teach you how to hunt how to live safe and well. You can feel the night wind on your face, taste the heartbeat of the kill beneath your jaws. It is glorious, much more so than the priestly lie the Schattenjäger offers. Don't confuse yourself with ideas of good and evil. Nature shows us that there are no such distinctions. You and I both inherited something from our fathers. Is your legacy any less of a curse or blessing than mine? Join me. Yours, Friedrich. Okay, now we know why Friedrich wanted to do that. He, want, he wanted to get rid of uh, Zell and uh, obviously make a new companion suitable for him. He tried with the Ludwig II. Unfortunately, Ludwig's uh, upbringing fought against the idea of being a werewolf and losing his immortal soul. And probably that's the part where he said, well, when Wontel also went a little bit mad, we all go crazy sometimes. Can I talk about that to Gabriel? Let's see. I'll tell him about the letter, eventually, when I have everything else under control. Okay, can I give him the medallion? I'll keep the talisman until Gabriel's better. It might not react well to that stuff in his blood. Okay, that's not either. I cannot talk to Mr. Smith. Maybe Mrs. Smith? Maybe? Sit down, Grace. Okay. We can talk, hopefully. Ah, oh, one Glover's letter, yeah. There's something I think you should see. Oh, my. Has Gabriel seen this? No. Well, my dear. I understand your reluctance, but it's his karma, you know? It's his choice. He's the son, you know, von Glauer. He's the son of von Rolick. 
Yes, I think you're right. And he wants Gabriel. So it seems. But that doesn't mean Gabriel wants that life. He didn't ask to be bitten. <sighs> you don't know him like I do. Running on all fours wouldn't be a big stretch. I won't tell you the choice will be an easy one. But it's a battle he must fight. All you can do is believe in him. That's all you can do. Now you be careful. Okay, can we talk to him? Werner looks about as interested in talking to me as I am in talking to him. He feels pretty bad about Gabriel. Okay, so can we now enter the altar thing? Because to be honest, I don't know what else to do. Uh, hopefully we can do that. If not, then I'll probably... Hmm, I don't know. So let's go here. Are we... Okay, it sounds like the mass has ended. Hello. Yeah, I don't hear anything, so... Maybe we can finally move forward. I have a gift for the Madonna Father. Okay, Grace. Okay. Uh, if I could get away with moving that chair, I could reach the urns. Right. Uh, I think the box is for penitent offerings. It's the Lady of Altadin. It's the. Right. Um. I can go here. He's praying for me. Good. I need all the help I can get. So can I use this? No. If uh. I could get away with moving that chair, I could reach the urns. I think that door leads outside. So maybe we need to go and check what's in here then. I don't want to disturb her. The walls are covered with silver penitent offerings. Hmm. Okay. Where does this... Ah, outside, okay. So I need to move the chair. What do I have? Keys... Wallet. Huh. No, 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 no. Come on, put that away. Uh. Oh, okay. The heart earns. I think I know which one is Ludwig's, but how am I going to get it down? I think. I think. Hmm. So, wait a minute, where would this lead? Wait, where where was it? This. I think I've seen I think all... that door leads outside. I think that door leads outside. Huh. I think that... Can I... Oh. I think that... I think... Can I do something with that? I think... 
I think that door. Okay. He's praying for me. Good. I need all the help I can get. Hmm. If I could get away with moving that chair, I could reach the urns. Okay. I think the box is for penitent offerings. Sure thing. Oh, okay. So that's the box. Can I leave this on it? Oh, yeah. I was misclicking. I thought it was behind the box. deserve this curse. Help me help both of them. Please. Okay. Um, what do I do now? I hope this works. Oh. It's a bit windy. I only have a few seconds. Get there faster. Uh, that one, probably. Please don't drop it. Almost dropped that.
Ah, oh, finally here. Two months later, okay. Uh, that's great. Oh yeah, definitely the end game. So what are we supposed to do? Obviously, we are going to make a save. Uh, uh, so we have doors. Let's check this first. Der Fluch des Engelhart by Richard Wagner, conducted by Herr Klaus Immerding and Herr Georg Immerding. I can't believe we've pulled it off. Georg, that was the name, obviously. Uh, we can go here, here, not there. I could use some fresh air, but I don't have time to go outside. Okay, that's fine. What's... Okay. Okay, same place. Fine. Can we go upstairs? We could go upstairs if we wanted to. Um, let's see. Obviously basement. This brings me memories. I'm not sure why I'd want to do that. Yeah. I'm not sure why I'd want to do that. Definitely memories. Hopefully this time I managed to do this. It might not be as hard as I remember. I just uh, did it a few times. Didn't succeed it to do it. Then ended it. Uh, decided that uh, yeah, I do it later, but. Well, the later never came. Wait, is this the same? Nope. We have one hour, people. Hey, Emmerding. Hey, Emmerding. Yes, Mr. Costello. Hey, Emmerding, I must again protest about my lack of vocalization in Act 3. I have not a single note until the transformation aria. Now, how many times do we have to go over this? You are disguised as a silent minstrel. I know that. But an aria sung to the audience, off to one side, would be very effective. Hildegon has one? Yes, but the audience is not supposed to know it's you until the transformation into a wolf. It's a surprise. You know, surprise. I realize that's the way it's written. I simply disagree with its effectiveness. Your opinion is noted. Ah, it's starting to get bloody Georg. You go. I, uh, I want to go over this one more time. I just realized uh, that um, Georg, I thought he seemed familiar, oddly familiar. If you ever have seen Pet Cemetery, the 89 version Pet Cemetery, 
he was the Victor Pascal who was run by a drug. I'm just checking if I have seen him somewhere else. He has been in Star Trek Voyager. Conan TV series? Okay, never seen that. Ah, Wing Commander Prophecy. Major Call Spider Bowen. I have played Wing Commander Prophecy, but I cannot remember. And um, Walker, Texas Ranger. Lost Souls. Uh, horror movie from 2000s. I actually checked that little while ago and um, okay Star Trek, Star Trek Enterprise Enterprise 2 episodes it's been quite a lot of parts nothing too major but still working quite a lot Annabelle creation oh Okay. Okay, but that's enough. But you know, for some reason, I remembered him from the pet cemetery. Let's go and talk to him. How are you holding up, Georg? Oh man, I'm going crazy. I wish I had never blackmailed Klaus into letting me conduct. Don't be ridiculous. The opera was your discovery, Georg, remember? You'll be famous after tonight. Assuming I don't make a complete ass of myself. Just half ass it. Okay, thanks for the pet talk. Um uh, app. Wait a minute, I can interact with the table. What's there then? Flowers? For me? Or what? Right, uh, so what are we going to do with that? That. Der Wagner der Flucht des Engelhardt. The Curse of Engelhardt by Richard Wagner. Act 1. Many years ago in a small German village there lived a young man named Engelhardt. Engelhardt was a lowly blacksmith's apprentice. He was fair of face but by nature gentle and shy. Being orphaned and having lived with a blacksmith in virtual slavery since his parents died, Engelhardt had nothing in the world to claim as his own. Nothing, that is, but an amazing talent. For ten years, the beautiful and much-desired wares that had passed for the blacksmith's own had actually been produced by Engelhardt. The blacksmith, a greedy and vain man, was determined to keep this a secret. He forbade Engelhardt to ever work the metal in front of another soul, on pain of death. But the blacksmith's ingratitude went further still. He was so plagued with envy of Engelhardt's talents that he treated Engelhardt like a lazy and worthless dog. Okay. Hilda Gunda, overcome by her fear and anger. Hilda Gunda wait, 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 when Hilda wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um Oh, oh, so yep. Yeah, okay. The other villagers, assuming that the blacksmith's behavior toward Inglehart must be deserved, followed suit. Now in the same town there lived a rich baron. The Baron maintained a patronly and righteous face with the villagers, but it was rumored that he was actually unspeakably cruel and wicked. There was also a young maiden, Hilda Gunda, who was lovely and good-hearted. Hilda Gunda was the only one who took pity on Inglehart and was kind to him. Inglehart loved Hilda Gunda madly, but was too shy and too penniless to even speak of it. In the first act, we learn that Hildegunda's parents, blinded by the prospective fortune, have betrothed her to the Baron. When Hildegunda learns of this, she is terrified and protests that the Baron is reputed to be evil, but her parents brush this off as jealous rumors and demand her obedience. Poor Hildegunda is too good to defy her parents' wishes, and so she reluctantly agrees. 
The Baron, with great public ceremony, sends Hildegunda a betrothal gift of a silver jewelry box. Okay, I'm gonna check. Okay, yeah, we go through these because why not? So, jewelry box. Hildegunda, overcome by her fear and anger at the betrothal, casts the jewelry box into the fire. She is immediately remorseful and pulls it out, but it is too late. The delicate silver has been madly marred. Hildegunda fears for her life when she sees the damage. She is afraid the blacksmith would report the damage to the Baron, so she approaches Engelhart and begs him to help her. Engelhart thinks of his master's warning, but determines to disregard it for Hildegunda's sake. He melts down the silver and constructs another box even more beautiful than the first. When Hildegunda sees his great artistic skill, she falls in love with him. The two come together in an aria of love, but their bliss is momentary. What about the betrothal? The young couple, knowing the Baron will never relinquish his claim, decide to run away. Act 2. The Baron learns of Hildegunda and Engelhart's disappearance. He is so furious that he hires hunters to track the pair down. Hildegunda and Engelhart are found and arrested. In a public trial, Hildegunda pleads their case in a stirring aria. She tells the townspeople of Engelhart's great skill and his mistreatment by the blacksmith. She tells them Engelhart is good and kind. The blacksmith should be turned out for his evils and Engelhart given the shop. Then she and Engelhart could marry and live in peace with their neighbors. Her parents chose a groom for her, but she begs to be allowed her own choice. It is then the Baron's turn to speak. He declares that he has been terribly injured, a victim of a wayward girl. His marriage claim was first. There can be no other. He implies that if the villagers do not help him make it right, he will remove his aid from the village coffers. Then the Baron turns to Engelhart. By the rights of the injured, the Baron announces, he is empowered to set a curse. The Baron curses Engelhart with a terrible and ancient malady, that whenever the moon shines in the night, Engelhart will become a marauding wolf. The village is terrified of wolves and has been plagued for many years by a local renegade wolf which has taken the lives of many children. The Baron further declares that because he is merciful, he will still marry Hildegunda, but not until she renounces Engelhart with her own words. Until she does, he will keep her safe from further shame by locking her up in a small room at the top of his house. The villagers naturally side with the Baron. Hildegunda goes to her prison, and Engelhart does indeed become a wolf at night. At first, Engelhart is hated and feared by the villagers. They make the sign of the evil eye at him and will not tolerate his presence in town. But soon, rumors start to circulate about Engelhart the wolf. It seems he is always careful not to harm any human being nor any domestic stock. In fact, he even does some good for the villagers. He scares away bandits and he keeps the renegade wolf at bay. No more children are lost to the fangs of the night. Engelhart's kindness shines through even the dire nature of his curse. Hildegunda, meanwhile, still loves Engelhart as much as ever, whatever curse he might be under, and whatever acts that curse might force him to commit. When she hears of Engelhart's successful mastery of the curse, she dedicates herself to him forever. Hildegunda tells the Baron that she will never renounce Engelhart. The Baron's plan having collapsed before him, having given Engelhart dignity rather than removed it, he flies into a rage. He tells Hildegunda that he will marry her anyway, and on the morrow at that. She will become his wife or her parents' life will be forfeit. Act 3 the final act begins with the wedding feast for Hildegunda and the Baron. Hildegunda has cooperated due to her fear for her parents' lives, but now that the service is over, she is horrified to find herself that Baron's wife and is mourning her final separation from Engelhart. After her poignant opening aria, the Baron approaches her and tries to draw her back to the party. He calls for the entertainment, hoping to cheer her up. In strides a traveling show of minstrels, they wear comic costumes and full face paint and immediately proceed to play and juggle for the crowd. One of them, a mime with a tragic frown painted on his face, seems to want to hover near and amuse the bride. She keeps brushing him off, clearly depressed and tearful, and he does his best to make her laugh. After the amusing antics of the minstrel's first song, the tone changes and the minstrel's music grows dark and theatrical. The Baron protests, preferring the comedy, 
but he's reassured by Hildegunda's father. The minstrels gather in a circle around the frowning minstrel. They whirl around him, and he slowly sinks from sight. The music grows more frantic. Suddenly, the minstrels burst apart like petals, and standing in the center of the room is a wolf. The villagers scream, but Hildegunda cries out that it is Engelhart. The wolf does not attack the crowd. It only lifts its head and begins to howl. The baron screams at the wolf to stop, and he screams at the villagers to kill the wolf, but they only stare in horror. The baron pulls his hair and gnashes his teeth. He rises and makes it to the center of the banquet hall, where he falls down in a heap of wedding silk. What emerges from the silk is another wolf. Engelhart has revealed the baron's terrible secret for all to see. He was the renegade wolf that had terrorized the village. The barren wolf escapes from the hall through the main archway. Engelhart leaps after him. The villagers rally in a cry of horror and fury. One of the men grabs an axe from the wall and entreats the others to follow. They will stalk and kill the murderous wolf. The villagers storm through the archway. Hildegunda follows. The final scene takes place in the woods outside the village. The villagers hunt the two wolves. They follow the wolf tracks, singing of the apparent ferocity of the battle between the two wolves. Hildegunda answers the men's excitement with her own fear for Ingelhart's life. The crowd emerges into a clearing. There, the two wolves are engaged in a final deadly embrace. As they watch, Ingelhart triumphs and the barren wolf sinks to the ground and dies. Unfortunately, Ingelhart is mortally wounded. His curse has been broken by the baron's death, but it is too late. Hildegunda sings her love to him, while the villagers pronounce him a great hero. Engelhart dies, and all mourn in a sorrowful final aria. Well, that's a tragic story if I ever heard one. Hopefully it doesn't end for Gabriel in a similar way. Anyways, let's go upstairs and see what we can find from there. Door, door. Let's see. The restrooms are back there. I don't need to go that way at the moment. Okay. Uh, what's in here then? Okay. Can I see anything from here? There's no easy way to get there from inside the auditorium. There's no... Okay. Grace Nakam. Oh yeah, Grace. Obviously. And what about the last one? There's no easy way to get there from inside the auditorium. Oh, right. We are over here then. There's no easy... I'm nervous enough. Thank God it's not me on that stage tonight. What am I supposed to... See? There's no see or do in here it would seem like there should be s i'm nervous enough thank god it's not me on that stage tonight hmm okay so these are for the balconies obviously what is this again a balcony apparently makes sense This is a nice box. Well, it's probably the best box in the town. These seats look comfortable. Well, I can't really say. I only see the back of the chair. Grace Nakamura. No, it's a banister or something like that. Those other seats don't look nearly as good as the ones in this box. <laughs> Again, best seat in the house. Uh... Okay. So what's on the right side? More boxes and a door. I'll check these through. Um, maybe there's something, maybe not. Nope. 
And last but not least, can I interact with anything? Not really. And this door. Looks like I found a spotlight, and one that's not often used by the look of it. Okay. I'm guessing that will be... S I should try to aim the spotlight, but I haven't decided where to see Von Glauer yet. Oh, so when we know... No point in aiming it until it's on. I should... Okay, so before we do that, we are not doing anything this that's a nice box over there i could shine the spotlight just about anywhere if i wanted to i could sh i could okay good to know so i could shine i could okay fine uh so nothing for now so did i miss something in the basement yeah, we know already this. Um, I'll check the basement once more. So if I go up, Grace Nakam, and up. Okay, dead end. Lots of drains around here. At least they don't have to worry about flooding. Unless they get stuck. Um, I have that stuck. Uh, but anyways. So, what is this place then? Hmm. This is... Okay. That rope might come in handy. Well, if you can take it, let's take it then. Did he drop something? We have a rope. Let's go steal back in the basement because I'm. What is this? This is a, a door, obviously. But anything? Can I? Can I open it? Gabriel back to Riddersburg before tonight. This room might do the trick, but I need to be able to lock it. Okay. Is this some kind of prop room? A lot of theater junk. I'm asking if this is some kind of prop room when it actually reads in here. Looks like an old set piece. Looks like. So I should find a key probably a lot of theater junk looks like an old set piece a lot of theater junk uh, anything else a lot of yes we know can i well that's an exit okay uh, Actually, I was wanted to go down if I can. Cool air's coming in through that vent. It must lead outside. Okay. This is a... Lots of... Dead end. And, um... Oh. I thought we were going forward. What is this, then? 
electric box. Not much in here. Uh, oh, okay, key. Key for what? For the prop room? Hmm. Not much in here. Okay, so we can leave from here. Let's check the keys. Um, the other keys, fine. So would that mean we can lock these? Is there anything else in here? A lot. Looks like an old. Looks. Looks. Like a lot of. This would seem like there should be something. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> okay, so we apparently needed that. Leave out banner. It says private. Right. Um, the question is, can I lock? Can I use? Would would she say if I can use these keys? Let's try. Oh. I guess these are right keys. Maybe. Hmm. So I think we Where do I go if I want to leave from to here? Okay. So I'm not sure what else to say to get. Okay. Was there something on the right side? Yeah, there's the egg. Oh, but we are downstairs. What is this? Oh. oh okay 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 i'm gonna make a save here just to be certain and um let's see what do we have in here here's that list i made Okay, what what list? Uh nope. The idea was to to check the to do list. I made this list of things to do. Chandeliers. I made G to be safe in Rittersburg Night of Opera Born. Age about possible distractions, wait until last minute, figure out where to seat VG and uh, Leb, uh, inform Usher of seating plans, set up a secondary spotlight on VG, uh, run it myself, find way to trap VG in a seat, set up MTG with the Leb at the theater, make sure is armed okay we might as well talk to gabriel mm, something in here old playbills and schedules no 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 something else Old playbills and old, play old. Oh, nice. 
What are we going to do with that? A seeding chart. This might be useful. Yeah, I guess so. So, is that it? Old. It would seem like it, yeah. Um. I'm not ready to get dressed yet. Fine. How's the Gabriel doing at the moment? Probably not that good. How do you feel? Like someone's put broken glass in my brain. I thought we'd have you back in Rittersburg by now. The Smiths are waiting for you there. It's okay. Just stick me in a room somewhere. Are we ready for the test? I'll check. Could you see about some heat, Gracie? I'm really freezing in here. Are you cold? Sure. It's cold. I'll see what I can do. I'm good. You do that. Okay. Uh, sh what? Oh. Wagner's layout of the theater. Wagner's layout of the theater. I suppose that large X had something to do with the seating arrangements. It's in a nice line from the chandeliers. So that is probably when we need to seat the. Where's the seating chart? Is it this? A large X on Wagner's diagram is in an area called the Mittel Loge on the seating chart. I'd better check it out. Well, we've been there, but okay, let's go back in there. So... Up we go. And it's this. This is definitely the Mitologe. According to Wagner, von Glauer gets seated here. Lieber too. Now I just need to find a way to block the doors. Uh, we have the rope. Maybe that works. Grace Nakamura. Um. The handles look sturdy. So we have this. That might work, but I'll have to wait until Von Glauer's in here. Okay, that's good. So we know we are going to use the ropes for that. Can I do something with this now? I can. So... We probably aim this. Okay. Perfect. And we are done with that. Uh, what next? We have the light. We know we, where we see Von Clover. We have a rope which we can use to close the door. So what now?
Who are you? He's Paul, the head usher. Oh, oh, are we giving the seating arrangement? Yeah. To him. Paul. Yeah. You're going to see two special invitations tonight. One is addressed to a man named Baron von Glauer. The other is Commissar Lieber. Both will be seated in the middle loja. I have it marked here. No problem. Oh, and when Commissar Lieber arrives, please find me. I need to speak with him before he's seated. Yes, von Akimura. Okay, that worked. Um, what now? 